Good morning. My name is Gail Fox. Can you tell me your full name, please? I'm Xu Li. What should I call you? Please call me Xu. Could you tell me where you're from? I'm from Qingdao, a seaside city in China. Can I see your identification, please? Yes, I have it here. Thank you. Now, in this first part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. Let's talk about where you live. What type of accommodation do you live in? I live in an apartment block in a three-bedroom apartment with my parents and my grandparents. It's quite old, but still very comfortable, and I love the location, which is close to the beach. Which room of the house or apartment do you spend most time in? Why? I guess I probably spend the most time in my room because that's where my computer is for study and playing games. And of course, I spend a lot of time in my bedroom sleeping. Describe the view from your house or apartment. My room looks out over quite a leafy green street, and then across to a more modern apartment block. If I look directly across, I can see into my neighbor's living room. Now let's talk about social networking. How often do you use social networking sites such as Facebook? Here in China, a site called Renren is very popular with young people, and I have joined this site. I probably spend about two hours a day playing games, updating my status, and looking at my friends' photos. Do you find it easy to use these websites? Very easy. Once I had familiarized myself with the format and layout, I guess they are designed to be very user friendly, because I find the site quite straightforward and simple to use most of the time. Do most of your friends also use similar websites? Oh, all my friends are on there. Absolutely, it's really popular, especially with young people, as we can upload all our photos. And arrange to meet each other, as well as comment on each other's status updates. It's a lot of fun. Do you prefer to communicate through social networking sites or face to face with someone? Well, I think that depends on the reason for communicating in the first place. There are lots of occasions when I still prefer face to face communication, like hanging out with friends in a group. Or seeing my boyfriend, but for people who live far away, it's nice to still feel connected to them through sites like Renren. Now let's talk about things you find funny. What type of things do you find amusing? Oh, that's an interesting question. I guess I find things that children do quite funny. Oh, and animals as well. Because they don't realize they're being funny, I like spontaneous humor rather than comedy and jokes and things like that, because it's more natural. Have you always found similar things amusing? I suppose so, but I've never really considered it until now. Actually, no. When I was younger, I thought children's cartoons were really funny, and now I can't stand them. Obviously, sense of humor is something that matures as you get older. Do you like to tell jokes and make others laugh? No, I really hate scripted jokes, so I almost never tell them, unless, of course, I hear a really funny one. But that's not very often. I like making other people laugh, of course, because I think it connects people. But I'm not a very humorous person, unfortunately. Do your friends and family have a similar sense of humor to you? No, we've all got quite unique senses of humor, I think, especially in my family. My dad likes comedy and stand-up shows, and my mother likes slapstick humor. Whereas, as I said, 
I'm a bit different in that I like naturally occurring humor. Now I'm going to give you a topic, and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. Before you talk, you'll have one minute to think about what you're going to say. You can make some notes if you wish. Do you understand? Yes. Here's some paper and a pencil for making notes, and here's your topic. I'd like you to talk about a rule or law. You would suggest to improve your country. A law which I think would really improve my country, or any country for that matter, would be one which requires everybody to volunteer time to a particular charity or cause which they have chosen. The law would stipulate how many hours per year that each citizen had to contribute to the charity or organisation, and there would be quite strict penalties for not contributing the required number of hours. This would improve the country in lots of different ways. The first way is that through volunteer hours, human resource would be built, and the charities would benefit from increased manpower. In turn, this would benefit the community, as the various charitable groups would improve their services to the community. So, in this sense, it is a win-win situation. I think another byproduct of volunteering. Is the sense of pride and good feeling that people could gain by volunteering and doing something meaningful, rather than something which is purely based on financial gain? As well, people would build friendships and social connection through meeting other volunteers. This law is necessary because I think in today's modern world, people have lost touch with their sense of community and moral obligation to help others. As the world has become very individualistic and self-centered, at the moment it's all about me, me, me. But I think this law would help to create community spirit again. Of course, there would be an awful lot of administration required to enforce the law. It might also be difficult to monitor who had completed their hours and so on each year, and naturally, people might choose to pay the fine. Rather than do the volunteer hours, which would defeat the purpose of the whole thing, I'm pretty sure this law would never be introduced, because politicians perceive that there are much more pressing issues which require legislation, and it's actually quite unrealistic. But I think this law would make a real difference to society. Thank you. Have you ever heard of a country which has this type of law? No, I haven't, and I'm sure that no country has it. It's a bit of a dream, really. Do you often think about the laws in your country? Not often. I mostly just accept them and get on with my life. We've been talking about a law you would like to suggest for your country, and now I'd like to discuss with you one or two more general questions related to this. Let's consider first the topic of crime and law enforcement. In your opinion, is being a police officer a difficult or easy job in your country? I think that being a police officer is one of the most difficult jobs. 
mainly because of the possible danger involved. I mean, they never know when they turn up to a call out what they're really going to be dealing with, and often it presents a threat to their personal safety. The good thing is that police officers are very highly respected in my country, so they have public support on their side. What are some of the more common crimes which occur in your country? What do you think are some possible reasons for these types of crime? I think the most common types of crime are probably burglary and theft, as well as mugging. These are the types of crime that I read about most often in the newspaper. Youth crime has also experienced a big increase in recent years. I'm not sure about the reason for these crimes, but I would guess that poverty is the main motivation behind crimes such as burglary and mugging. If people don't have a job or enough money to feed their family, then I guess they resort to these types of crime in order to survive. As for youth, I think some people think this is due to a decline in social values, and a rise in the number of broken homes. But I'm not really sure. Maybe it's just boredom. Many people are in agreement that the police force should be armed with guns. What's your view? I definitely think the police should be armed. Otherwise, they've got no protection. And are extremely vulnerable in their day-to-day -day work. The unpredictable nature of police work means that having a gun on their person is essential. I think it makes the public feel more secure too, as they know that the police are able to respond quickly and effectively to any dangerous situation which may arise. I know I certainly feel more secure knowing the police force here is armed. Now let's talk about the legal and justice system in your country. What types of personal and professional qualities make a good lawyer, in your opinion? I believe a good lawyer needs to be intelligent, compassionate, and patient, as well as having strong beliefs in basic legal principles, such as the fact that everybody has the right to good legal representation. A good lawyer also needs to be able to argue their client's case for innocence, even when they know they might be guilty. So I think morally, it's not as straightforward as it might seem. It's not a profession that I would ever be interested in for that very reason. In some countries, corruption of the legal system is a serious concern. Can you think of any potential solutions to this issue? I think one of the solutions to this issue lies in the fact that many people in the public service are underpaid, and this contributes to the temptation to accept bribes and so on. So perhaps better wages and conditions for these types of workers might put a stop to some corruption. I also believe that harsher penalties for corruption would help prevent the problem, but it is a complex one to try and tackle. Are there any situations in which you can imagine that it would be acceptable to break the law? To be honest, the only situation which springs to mind is if one had to break the law in order to save another's life or to protect another person from imminent danger. This would be because the greater need in that instance would be the saving of human life, as opposed to following a law or a rule. Maybe an example of this is killing someone in self-defence or defence of another innocent person. I think it's very complicated, though, and personally, I can't imagine ever breaking the law. Thank you. That is the end of the speaking test.